Joining me now is the Agriculture Minister and Deputy Nationals Leader, Bridget McKenzie. Thanks so much for your time. Um, this Great is a move, you. thank you, this is a move by the New South Wales uh, Government which demonstrates that the Commonwealth and the State Governments really need to work together here. Do you welcome this move? Oh, absolutely. I think it's a fantastic example of what a state government can do. Uh, you know, constitutionally, they are responsible for certain aspects of managing uh, land and water within their state and certain areas of the drought response. And to have such a proactive and powerful um, message go out and legislation uh, to be drafted and enacted that will make a difference mm. on the ground uh, in those communities and for those farmers is a fantastic uh, initiative and I would encourage uh, Queensland in particular, uh, where we know farmers have been in drought in excess of seven years, to be really ramping up their drought response and not retreating, which is actually what the Palaszczuk government's been doing. Yeah, when drought doesn't stop at, at state borders, I think people often look to the federal no. government for the answers when it's obviously the states that look after water and other areas. So it is a joint effort. But this is now the worst drought. Yeah, and I think... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bridget? Oh, sorry, uh, Laura, I was going to, going to say that. I mean, uh, drought is one thing that we all have to work together on, uh, our local communities, our councils, industry. Um, the NFF has just released uh, their drought policy today and it actually goes to that very heart that by working together, states, federal and local government with industry, uh, that's going to give us the best drought um, policy response uh, mm. that our nation needs because this won't be the last time we go through this. No, and it, at the moment it is the worst drought on record. Mm. Are the nationals looking to do more and push the government to do more at a federal level and when? Well, Laura, as you and your viewers know, um, we as a government have taken this drought very, very seriously. It's been uh, our number one priority. It's why we've got $7 billion worth of support on the table, uh, making sure we've got direct payments to farmers' households, which is the area I look out for. We've got the Future Drought Fund, which will be helping with building resilience in communities going forward. And we've got a whole suite of initiatives that are putting money into drought-affected towns to make sure that people stay employed and purchase locally. But we are always looking uh, at how we can respond more effectively. And I know my National Party colleagues, uh, who all live and work and raise families out across regional Australia, and in many cases, uh, particularly my colleagues in New South, New South Wales sorry, and Queensland, have been very, very vocal to me uh, constantly over the last... Uh, since I've had the job, uh, with what's happening in their local communities and where they think we as a government can respond better and I'm constantly assessing what they tell me. Well, how so urgent is watch the this next space. step? How urgent is the next step? Because Barnaby Joyce did tell David Spears yesterday that the Nationals are pushing for more. Can you give us an idea mm. about what measures you might consider in the next step? Well, Laura, um, I'm not going to announce the government's uh, next initiatives on drought policy uh, on, on your morning breakfast show, but I can, you know, confirm that what Barnaby's saying is dead right. Uh, National Party colleagues, uh, backbench members of parliament who are advocating to the leadership team on behalf of their communities, that's their job, they stand up for the bush, uh, have been very clear on a raft of measures that they want to see adopted. We know that the, the announcement we made only two weeks ago still needs to find its way through the system, a uh, radical simplification of farm household allowance, which will mean that... Over 30,000 farmers who are experiencing hardship right now will now be able to access this much-needed uh, immediate cash support. So we are making changes uh, as we go, but, yeah, uh, the boys from the bush uh, and now more girls from the bush mm -hmm. are making it very clear to me uh, that we need to keep an eye on the ball and keep our response um, yeah. uh, reacting uh, with, with the communities that are doing it tough right now. One of your... You say policies aren't set and forget, and that, that's fair enough. Uh, one of the no. things that you have changed is this farm household assistance. You uh, mm. previously were only able to get this once in a, in a lifetime. Now it's been capped at, at four years. But if this drought does go on for another couple of years, and, look, there's no rain in sight, will you revisit that again? Because we've got a lot of feedback here at Sky News. We're covering uh, the drought. We've got reporters everywhere. There is a, a comparison that, you know, if you are on some kind of assistance, whether it's... Um, assistance for education or welfare, or you're on the dole, there's no cap on that. And, but for farmers it is. Why is it different? Well, farmers are running a business 
and we've taken the advice of farmers. So the Farm Household Allowance Review that was undertaken comprehensively looked at this payment and said, you know, it's hard to get, um, it's complicated, uh, and it needs to recognise that farmers go through more than one period of hardship in their entire six-decade life in farming. Mm. So on the advice of... It was chaired by a dairy farmer um, from Tasmania, Georgie Somerset, the president of AgForce, also uh, made submissions and, and led the review and they talked increasingly just to farmers who said, we go through more than one period of hardship, but we don't want it more than four out of ten years. Um, and I think that's important. Even the NFF said today in their drought policy response that farmers want this to be a time-limited yeah. payment. So you have to make tough decisions, right? Um, so we, you're not just getting the payment. We've coupled that with uh, rural financial counsellors, which help you work through your business. How can I right now make changes on farm to get more cash in so I can feed stock? Uh, do I need to look to succession planning yeah. or should I be selling up and, and doing something else? That's what that payment's meant to do. But, of course, uh, we're looking at how we can always support farmers as this drought extended, in, particularly in Queensland, into an extremely long period of time that nobody saw coming. Is part of that tough decision-making that if you spend more money on drought, it might threaten the surplus? Oh, not at all. No. I mean, I guess that's... Why I'm, you know, we all need to be very grateful for the fact that the tough economic management that the coalition has brought over the last uh, six years has meant we can respond effectively uh, and immediately uh, to the needs of the drought. And we just need, we can do that, as we did two weeks ago, another $100 million on the table, uh, but also we can plan initiatives that are going to help us for the next time because it's not just enough to uh, deal with the immediacy of the issue today. Uh, but we need to understand this won't be the last time. So what can we do now? Yeah. Uh, what do we need to make investments as a government? So we've got David Littleproud's Future Drought Fund. And in my own portfolio, I'm looking at research and development, new market access for products, so that when the rain does come, we've got uh, ways for farmers to be innovative, mm. uh, 21st century, globally focused, and then make more profits in the good times so that when the bad times come, they're much more resilient. Just really quickly, Border Force cancelled the visa of an, a woman from uh, Vietnam, I believe, trying to bring in uh, pork. This is a, really a concern yes. over African swine fever. You wouldn't normally send someone back, essentially, to port them, would they? Is this an indication of how seriously you're taking this? And what was she exactly trying to bring in? Oh, look, Laura, it just boggles the mind. Look, African swine fever uh, will devastate our 2007 uh, 100 pork producers who, who that whole industry employs over 36,000 Australians if it gets into our country and we've seen it march south. We've ramped up our inspections of people and parcels at the border over the last eight months and in that time we've uncovered over 27 tonne of cooked pork product. Now that is astounding that people think that they can stuff their son or daughter's favourite pork sausage in their handbag or suitcase uh, and, and try and get it through our biosecurity system. So, on the weekend, uh, obviously, this woman in her suitcase had uh, over 10 kilograms of not just pork product, I think there was quail, squid, uh, garlic, any... Yeah, exactly, a whole array of material that poses a biosecurity risk. My officers uh, assessed that as a breach of the Biosecurity Act, referred it to Border Force, who uh, cancelled her visa, put her on the plane the next day back to Vietnam. We're taking this incredibly seriously. We have $6 trillion worth of environmental and human and animal health uh, assets out there that would be at risk should we get any number of pests and disease from across the world. And it underpins our trade reputation. And I'm not going to put anything at risk in that regard. So we're going to continue to be tough on the border when it comes to African swine fever and any other pests and disease that would seek to undermine our brand proposition. 